Jackie, would you like to, is Jackie here? Or not here? Yeah, Jackie. Here, right? thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Oh, holy God, we thank you so much for bringing us back together for the time you blessed us this morning, being together with you for how you're teaching us. We're so blessed in these important times we live in. We thank you that you're taking us, each one, wherever we are, individually guiding moment by moment that we put our faith and trust in you, no matter what you allow to happen, it's always for our good. And that we praise you for it and thank you for every gift you give to us. So please be with those leading out in this afternoon study time. Yes, open our hearts and minds. Place your truth, Father, in our minds because we need it, we want it. We know that we're, we're preparing, you're preparing us so that we will be ready very soon to give this message to the Levites. Yes, it'll be the first and second call. And there are many still with hearts open that are looking at events right now happening in their questioning, they're wondering, they're seeing things that we even see at this time. I'm just thankful for this work you're doing silently, day by day. Yes, in many ways it is silent, but it's doing a work in us to change us and to get us ready for that time. So thank you for this. Thank you for being with us now in this afternoon. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let's go do a review. Well, first off, um, I put this on a so that we can put it on the screen, take it out of the chat. Um, Christine posted it again. So what I want to encourage you to do in your personal study is to have a checklist. You go to a verse. Look at the words in the English, in the then look at the definitions. You look at them in the Greek and the Hebrew in a concordance. You proof text the words, then try to apply William Miller's rules, all of them, but particularly one in five. One, every word needs to have its proper weight, its proper direction, or what Miller says, its proper bearing. Bearing here means weight and direction. Rule number five, the Bible, as much as you're able to, should be its own dictionary, its own expositor. You have to use that rule carefully. Most of us are not experienced in doing that, but it is really easy to learn the rules. Once we do that, we've got the words, then what we need to do is think of parables. What type of parable is it? Compare and contrast, juxtaposition, natural and spiritual, chiasm, alpha and omega, Jesus, repeat and enlarge, or prophecy. You have to figure this out proactively, intentionally, and systematically. So you have juxtaposition, compare and contrast, natural, spiritual, alpha and omega, the beginning and the end, parabola. Jesus lived as a parable. Repeat and enlarge in a chiasm or a mere reflection and prophecy in rule of first mention. So then we'll go back over to um, maybe see who can do a review. Uh, in verse one, I just want to touch on what we learned here was the principle of cause and effect. We bring our own circumstances by our choices and our actions. So cause and effect. Um, but let's just somebody who wants to summarize what we got from uh, verse six. All 
I think I mean verse, yeah, no, verse six. And seven, sorry. Verse seven is what we did last week. Who wants to summarize what we got from verse seven? Anybody? Well, there will be no confusion. Um, because you know who his helper is and it, it is God who helps him, helps me. And so there's no confusion. Um, not be dumbfounded. Uh, and going to be immovable. Going to be an immovable object, like a boulder. Wow. And uh, the things that I do, things that I say, I'm not going to be ashamed of it because I know who my helper is. I think it's interesting in the in the Hebrew too, it's H3637, confounded, to insult, shame, humiliate. So I won't be insulted, I won't be shamed, I won't be humiliated. Um, and, be, and I won't be put to confusion or humiliation. So um, no matter what you say to me, and it's a process that gets us to this point because what I was thinking this morning when I was reviewing these verses, when you go back to verse six, is why I got confused and thinking six or seven. You go back to verse six, you look at what's happening to him. And if we went into what's happening to him there in our own lives and it, it, it happens to us, how many times do we, um, do we react? How do we react? And, and so this process that the message is bringing about in us is to change our reaction um, when we are spit upon, when they do try to shame us, pluck off the, the beard and smite us. Um, but what we see is faith. Experience leads to faith. Um, and that, and as a consequence of the journey that we've been on, we can choose to set our face like a flint or like a rock, unmovable, as um, Bell just said. We cannot be moved. Um, and it's interesting because I hid not my face. In other words, I stood there and I took it. I stood there and I took it, and I didn't respond to their to their evil because he did no wrong and to do so would be would not be serving of or fit for uh, how do you say not fit for purpose but it would have no effect to respond back you know when the, like we're actually witnessing when it comes to vaccines and mask wearing I think we all probably, most of us, if not all of us, have encountered those that you just kind of wind up, there's nothing I can say. To say anything is, is gonna have no effect whatsoever. And even though your heart may yearn to, to help them to see how wrong they are, there's nothing you can say. So as we head into the work at Panium, this would be more aggressive on us. And are we ready to go through it and have the faith that is demonstrated here that I will not be moved. I'm not gonna respond using my lower passions, my feelings, my emotions. I may respond using the lower passions for righteousness for glory um, for truth's sake anybody else can you hear me yes 
I was thinking um, when you were reading that about what Donna had said previous when uh, Francisco and Donna were sharing and um, the word conviction came up right in um, how Donna expressed that to pray for convictions and that when you are convicted, right, you only have the two choices, right? Yeah. You either turn from it or you go with it. And we each have had those experiences and they brought us and those experiences so far to date have brought us to this point in our relationship. And so we're getting um, stronger. Our faces are, you know, the flint is strengthening in, in our convictions that this is the truth. And we can see, like you said, Elaine, that it's playing out before our very eyes. And we saw it on the lines play out before we saw it happen in real life right and um then i'm sure each of us are have um because that's like the external events that are going on that are fulfilling the light lines but we also have um each of us i'm sure we are having um internal like um experiences i guess if that's what you want to say and um i was thinking when you were reading this, um, because many times people will say things, okay, um, let's see, sometimes I try to explain something and I'm afraid maybe I won't be clear because they can see it in my head, but I want to be sure that you can understand what I'm saying. I'm there with you there. One, pardon me? I said, I'm with you there. <laughs> you can see it clear. Yeah. Here. You put it into words. You can see it, but to put it into words, I'm trying to teach the kids that, the, you know, that I'm working with, and I need that, right? And so, um, because we have to pretend people don't know anything at all, so you have to give them the details so that you can paint a picture for them, because other you have to just pretend they don't know a thing. So, I'll use this experience that I had um, coming here to this place when I made this move, right? And, um, Many times when you're faced with having to make a decision, sometimes, you know, you'll get counsel maybe, but sometimes the counsel is sort of mixed and even the best counsel you could try to get can't always tell you what you should do in that particular situation, right? And I've noticed that for me personally, maybe some of you are having this too, where God is making you have to lean in on him completely to make that decision that even the best intended people on the outside aren't able to you're still going to take it back and have to ruminate what they said and compare it to what right and uh it, bottom line you still have to go with what god's showing you that's what i'm learning and so when i chose to come to this place Many people were saying, oh, Susan, you don't want to move there. What about fires, right? Um, and every time someone would put like a doubt in my mind or a fear, right, in my mind, I'd take it back to God. And in my simple way, the way I talk to him, like, you know, just like I'm talking to you guys, I just lay it out there. And I'm like, you know, surely, God, please just shut the door completely if this is wrong for me anyway to make a long story short even the realtor when he brought me up here was like have you looked at a lot of other places and compared a lot of other places and I knew he was gonna think I was so stupid because I said no I knew this was the place it fit every single thing I had prayed for on the list I know that sounds unbelievable but I had waited 30 years to come back to the country and it fit every single thing I asked the Lord for and but there are still those like scary moments where you, it's a big step you might have to take and people might laugh at you or um you know what I mean but when you know that it's God's will for you like this message and how it's transforming each of us in our lives 
and the way we think. And um, we know even no matter what people say, we won't be ashamed. And then when you kind of make it through that particular text, God will wink at you. He'll give you, he'll give you like, ah, you did it. Well done. Sort of kind of a thing because a couple of weeks ago after, right, <laughs> making some, like going through some things, I sat down quietly and I looked, something just drew my attention to look at the side of the mobile home that I'm, I, I purchased. And on the side of the mobile home is this registration, um, like a metal placard on it. And you never guess the number that's on that registration placard. And I just, the goosebumps just ran up my arms. And I just like looked up to heavens and was like, oh God, thank you so much, Lord. Is it 144,000? And 46, that's the number, 144,046, right? And I'm like, oh, Lord, you know? I mean, he just, in so many ways, he will confirm that we're making not only as a movement, but as an individual that you are following his will for you. And it's just, that's what I thought of when I, when you were reading this, that these experiences are going to so harden our um, faith, uh, so to speak, our decision, and we nothing will be able to turn us right or to the left, right? And we will not be ashamed no matter what anybody says. Yeah, that's what I wanted to share. And, and for the record, this is the only house I looked at, too. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, but that's did. not normal. No. Most people, you know, you should look at several and you know what I mean? But I didn't when care you know, about the you house. Didn't I know. Just cared about knowing where I was supposed to go. And, and I knew driving out here before I even got to the house that this is where I was going. Even yeah. though I didn't know my way out here, <laughs> I took a wrong turn. Yeah. I still knew this is Same where I was here. going. And then I made had Same to make here, maybe had the same experience, but I had to make a couple of trips back and forth, less than you did, yes. before it all happened. And and every one of those trips was like such a joy, <laughs> such a song in my heart on the on the journey out here. And uh, yes. so yeah, he he does give us. And then it was after the fact that I don't know who it was. You guys, maybe it was Adriana, Tony. I don't remember, but here I am living on the with the. Um, cross street of Miller Way in the town of Plymouth. I think I think it was uh, Francisco that brought up Plymouth and um, then on Nugget Way. And it was just like, he kind of confirms that along the way that you're where you're supposed to be. And so Amen. yeah, it increases our faith to trust him. It makes yes. it easier to trust him and, and builds that forehead of flint or that face like a flint, which is like a rock um, and you're able to stand there and and take whatever they're ready to getting ready to throw at us. It's like uh, the yeah. it's like the story of Matthew and the Desire of Ages we're reading this morning, where where Christ just goes up to him and says, "Follow me," and he just dropped everything. There you go. He'd seen enough already. He knew. He, he knew. He knew what he had to do, and he just did it. Yeah. And I, I say that we as priests have have come in dragging our feet. Yeah. And God is merciful because I really believe we've dragged our feet. And um and and I think it's you know the skepticism and and so many other things that, that had to be removed um before we could be open to hear the what some are gonna think is well that's craziness, you know. <laughs> so so he had to remove all that from us so that we would be prepared to to hear what we've been hearing these past couple of years. Well, they they thought they thought Christ was talking craziness when he came on the scene, and you know the leadership yep. couldn't see it. Nobody else could see it except for the people who talked directly to Jesus, and and he talked directly to them, and they knew it was the truth and just went with it. 
Yeah. So we um, touched on the verses before already, but just to, to go back to this one that um, he had opened my ear, waked me morning by morning and opened my ear for the learned, which is interesting because um, to hear as the learned, um, and there are others, as we look at Donna's um, presentation, there are others in that church one group that their ears were wakened as well um, to hear as the learned. So, um, and I think that's where it takes you to verse five, you know, because there's, everyone got to hear, everyone has the opportunity to hear as the learned, um, but this one, he makes a choice when his ear is, is open and he hears that he wasn't rebellious and didn't turn away and back as he heard, he heard, he believed and, and accepted and and grew in faith. And um, he was able to stand even though they were against him and, and doing all the things, well, this verse specifies what, but he was able to take whatever they would um, put upon him. And this is gonna be, you know, this is what we're preparing for as well. But then verse five, I mean, verse seven, what I mean, there are many things you can pull out here depending on what story you want to tell, what perspective. But the one I get out of this, as we look at eight and nine with it, is faith that he knows the Lord God will help him. And so we've kind of touched on the word confounded, um, flint, and and ashamed being the same, close similar to the word confounded. Um, but it's faith. That, that that is built here into this into this verse and i don't know if anybody has any thoughts on building it into a structure if they do i'm love to hear it and i do have my board up behind me if we if we don't have somebody that can write in the um you know doesn't have the writing capabilities we can try and draw it out if you have any of that and I'll leave that for a question, and if nobody responds, we'll go to verse eight. Because that's definitely where we need to practice that. Okay, so when we go back to, um, I should have printed it. Let me print this so that I have it in front of me as well. Um, hold on one second. I'm always kind of hectic when you have multiple printers connected to your computer. Um, so we did look at the words in this verse and help me out if I've missed anything keep me as well in line um, we looked at some of the words and um, defined them through uh, looking at the English the definitions and the Greek word I don't know if we looked at the English definitions did we do that is that what that means Christine or oh, she can't talk um, is that what that means, you guys, looking at the English definitions as well? Let's see here. Post a couple things down here. Okay, so you can still see the... Um, okay, so we looked at the definitions of, at least we looked at um, the, what, what I think, and maybe there's somebody else sees other main words in here, but confounded and flint and, and ashamed being... Um, being the main words here, and we've looked at those. Anybody else before we move on? Uh, let's see. And then rule, try to apply William Miller's rules. Every word needs to have its proper weight, its proper direction, its proper, proper bearing or weight or direction. Any comments? And number five, as much as you're able to, let the Bible be its own dictionary or its own expositor, and we have to use that rule carefully. And I can understand that because when he talks about proof texting, where you're going to go to another verse, if you go to another verse to find the same word, the context could be something completely different. 
And you're going to take the meaning of that verse and combine it into this verse, which has a completely different context. So it would not, so you would wind up in trouble. That's an excellent explanation because um, when you're using the English language period, um, you're writing a sentence, you know, like, we'll keep it real simple. I like the boy uh, who likes to ride the bike. With, but, and so you use like twice in that sentence, which makes it a boring sentence. So you want to switch it up. You want to change one of those likes to a different word. And if you use, go to a thesaurus and you pull up the word like, you're going to get a lot of synonyms for that word, but not all of those synonyms are reflective of what that word truly means. So the same when we look up these meanings um, in Greek and Hebrew, we've done that many times and it pulls up lots and we've used the Webster's 1828, right? And we pull up um, all the ways that word can, uh, all the meanings of that word. But then it's up to the Bible to guide us, like you're saying, Elaine, to direct us to which meaning is the most appropriate uh, one for that particular, uh, what what that particular uh, text is saying. Um, yeah, it's tricky sometimes, too, um, choosing the right one until you're real familiar with the um, verses. In their context. Well, you'd have to think that in verse six that it's um, pretty humiliating to stand there and people spit on you. You know, and and uh, going back into verse seven, then that I'll not be confounded. I won't be humiliated. I won't be ashamed. There's a lot of strength in that, and that strength comes from faith to um to be able to to come to that place to where you rise above the rise above the um the evil that is being thrown on you but it also going back to martin luther it also um that silence and that steadfastness that face like a flint you know you're you have oftentimes there and not oftentimes but there's times there's going to be times where there's witnesses to what is going on and in the case of christ there were definitely witnesses all around that that saw these things happening right and it's like a compare and contrast for people that have gotten this far in earth's history and been through the election of Donald Trump and the four years of presidency and still not seeing what they need to see or what have you that 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 then when they see a good person, a harmless person who they can see has done nothing wrong and all this evil is being hurled at that person, it's a it's a, an ex it's when going back to Donna talking about conviction is convicting people they're seeing black and white they're seeing good versus evil they're seeing an innocent person being and, and it's interesting because when we look at the racism issues and and um sexism and and the crimes against um LGBTQ, it, it's kind of like it's viewed as, well, that's over there. It's not really here. It's not in my life. It doesn't pertain to me. I don't really need to get involved. In, and, and, but hearts have to be come face to face with the, with the reality of good versus evil what is happening so but anyways what i did get out of there was um definitely out of there was faith especially as we combine it with the other verses so 
do we see anything in there when it comes to looking at it now as a parable? Do we see it? What do, how do we see that? What would we identify it as with a parable? Any thoughts? Would this be, would this be Jesus as a parable? Can you say that again? Uh, I didn't understand. What kind of parable? What did you well, say? Well, we we looked at the words and their meanings, right? We're looking at Miller's rules. Um, in the next step is you have to figure this out proactively, intentionally, and systematically. So the next step is the different types of parables. Can we look at it as um, we, what we need to do is think of parables. What type of parable is it? Verse seven, what type of parable is it? And, and do you want the list up here again? Christine posted it in chat. Yeah, she did. I just didn't Isn't hear it all the way. I get it. I You made it clear. Thank you. Here's where I'm thinking. What are your guys' thoughts? Yeah, I see it as Jesus as a parable. But it could also be um, compare and contrast. Explain that. Mm, what he went through, what we word? go through. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, say that again. I said what he went through and what we will go through, what we're going through. Does that make sense? It does. I don't know. Um, how to pull that from the verse without saying no. it's a parable. Mm. That's just me. That doesn't mean I'm right. Yeah. Were you referring, Jackie, to verse six first? Like what Jesus I've how Jesus was and then verse seven is how we will be. You were comparing in that in that fashion. Yeah, it's verse six and seven because it describes what he went through and then seven says the Lord will help me, but that could be applying to, to Jesus as well. And our experience could be verse six. I gave my back to the smiters. And let them do it. Yeah. Yes, I see that. So you can look at the two verses as a compare and contrast is what you're saying. Yeah, I definitely see six and seven working together. Yeah. I agree with you there. Christine sees um, natural and spiritual. She posted in the that. Oh, and she's not able to talk to explain what she's Yeah. She says talking. and natural and spiritual. So that could apply as well. So could you have a couple uh, you could have two or three different types of parables out of that out of those two verses. I can definitely see compare and contrast in the two. Well, I, I'd rather hear more explanation if she's able even to type it in. Yeah. Of the natural and the spiritual. Yeah. And you have faith, which comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Um, hmm. 
No, no, she's typing and not somebody will have to help me out because I don't have the chat open. Or I think I can open it. Yeah, I can. Oh, she says yes, depending on how you look at it, your perspective. Yeah. And what point you're trying to prove, what, what story you're trying to tell. Mm hmm Okay. Anybody else? So somebody read verse eight. I can read verse eight. He is near that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Okay, so we'll break down the words. Um, I have, I want to leave this on the screen instead of going to the board. But I, unless, well, we can go, we'll switch back and forth. We'll go to the board for a minute. Um, I just have to stop and think, what are we doing? Okay, so we need to do that. Um, we'll go to the board here for just a minute. Move it. Watch out, guys. You can't see it yet, right? Mm, I see it, but not the top of the board. There we go. Okay. Okay. So I need to see here too. So hang on one second. That looks pretty good. Okay. Oh, I can't see it. So it's reversed for me. That's always weird how it does that. Okay. So um, I put the words up here and just the, the words that I was thinking we need to look at. And, uh, and then there. Um, Hebrew definition. So, and, and then I don't know if you guys have your phones out to go along to look at these, but I pulled out near because he is near that justifies me, right? That justifies me. And justify we want to look at too, but near gives you in the Brown Driver Briggs of place, of time, or personal relationship. What do you think in this place? In this passage, he is near. Um, place, time, or personal relationship? And think about verse 7. Place, time, or personal relationship? Uh, personal relationship. That's yeah. what I think too. With, where it says near, mm -hmm. he is near. Mm -hmm. It when 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 anything happens, it doesn't happen un, until God draws you near. You know, and I'm kind of comparing that to the near part. Because yeah. he's, he's saying he is he is near. And when you go back again to verse seven, for the Lord God will help me. Um, there's a relationship. You can see a relationship there, can't you? Right. right. There's a relationship. There's faith. Based on what we just read in the, everything in the passage went through, there's faith in that passage. So, so he is near. It would be not a place it's not like he's standing next to me or in time um you, you might i i would think you might be able to argue in the dispensation of of this time he's near but i think because you see faith as well that that you see it as a personal relationship or kinsman he's our kinsman our near kinsman yeah kinship yes yes so um, then um, justifieth, which 
I really like that one. So the one that is near is the one that justifies us. And what is what is justify to justify? Made right. To make right. That's what Made it right. is in here. To be to be just, to be righteous, to make right. And the reason that we know he's near is because he's teaching us to know who he is, right? right? And and um, that is developing. That's a kind of closeness that nobody could. That's a that's closer than any human could get to you, even because he gets right into the inner core of our being. You know yeah. what I'm trying to say? Well, what, well what, what this is taking a really big jump ahead, but just what would that mean to you? What would what, taking what, a what, you, what would you what's another way you might describe what you just said? Well, I'm not sure where you're trying to well maybe we'll wait and we'll draw out, out of me. Okay. You mean filling and filling of the Holy Spirit? Is that what you mean? A full infilling? That too, but yeah, we'll get to that point. We'll get to that point. So the one that makes us righteous is near. Who's the one that makes us righteous? God. Christ. Christ, our righteousness. Right? He is our righteousness. So he's our justifier. He makes us righteous. He's our righteousness. Think on that, Susan, as you think on the question I asked you. Okay, so, so we saw faith in verse 7. We saw a lot of things. We saw faith and the ability to stand like and be like a rock, be unmovable. And to not be ashamed or humiliated by anything that they, any spitting on us from the previous verse that they might do, um, any smiting of us or whatever they may do to us, um, we'll stand firm as a rock and our faith cannot be shaken. Our faith cannot be shaken. And that's where we need to get to that our faith not be shaken because when we go out there and be the living testimony, if our faith is shaken, then others will not see faith in us and they'll run and flee as well. So he is near that justifieth. He is our, we have a personal relationship with the one that makes us righteous. And now he asks a question. Who will contend with me and contend to strive or to contend to strive with words, um, with maybe with a legal um, lawsuit that we might strive with us? Um, and in Strong's, it says to properly to toss, that is grapple, mostly figuratively to wrangle, hold a controversy, um, to defend the adversary, which comes up soon, chide and complain, or to debate. So, so, so he's asking, who will contend with me? And then he says, let us stand together. So if I'm understanding that, he's saying, those of you that want to contend with me, come and let's stand together. Kind of takes me back to verse six. Come and stand together and we'll compare and contrast. We'll let people compare and contrast. You come stand next to me that you want to contend with me with all your arguments. Come stand next to me and let the people compare and contrast what they see. Christine, uh, Christine put in the chat justifieth uh, H6663. Uh -huh. A primitive root to be causatively ca causatively make right in the moral or forensic sense cleanse clear 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 self uh, be do just Justly, just justify, justify, uh, yeah, justify itself, be turned to righteousness. Yeah, 
to be or to turn to righteousness. Right. He makes us righteous. Um, the one that's near, he's near because we have a personal relationship with him, and he's the one that justifies us. So here you have this personal relationship with a someone that makes you righteous. So now you're righteous in him. And you say, who's going to contend with me? Come and stand next to me. Come and stand next that to me. That reminds me of Job because um, he was perfect and upright, uh, a form of righteousness like this, right? And um, then who came to contend with that relationship was Satan that entered the scene, right? Um, Sorry. I don't know. I didn't mean to walk away. No, don't, don't apologize. <laughs> no, there's a, I was just there's, a dog just, there's a dog just like mine outside my window. And I was like, I had to make sure Fergus was here. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes me feel bad. He shouldn't yeah. come loose. You know what I mean? I feel really bad if Fergus is out there last. Anyways. I yeah, it's really hot. They, we might be walking with somebody, I hope. Um, so yeah, go ahead, Susan, I'm sorry. Well, I kind of just, I didn't have much other than that. It just reminds me a lot of Job's experience when, when God was saying he's perfect and upright because this righteousness is a form of uprightness, right? Yeah. And um, he was a man who feared God, right? That that famous uh, verse in Job 1, 8, uh, a man that feareth God and escheweth evil. And then the next thing that happens when um, that relationship is formed like that between God and Job, then Satan enters to contend with this whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Like... Um, like what you're mentioning, like once we're ready, then God's going to bring in this um, compare and contr a juxtaposition where we'll be up close, more up close. Right now, we can watch right. and observe these things from afar, pretty much. But eventually, we're going to be drawn closer into this controversy, right? Can you see so, why we... Go ahead. That, that was all I had on that. So far, yes, yeah, so we can see why our faith needs to be what needs to be the faith of Jesus to to be able to live out that parable to others when when we are like you say drawn in more into the controversy, we're brought front and center to be the example and how we can actually if we if we dishonor the Lord with by shame and being humiliated and what have you, letting our feelings get involved, whatever it might be, then we're going to shame the Lord, but we're also going to cause harm on those that are supposed to be able to, um, it's the wrong way to word that, the ones we're there for to be a witness to. Does that make sense? Yes, completely. So, um, so we would fail and people could be lost because we didn't come to this place. We didn't get to this place to exercise this faith. So the word stand is to stand, remain, or endure, take one stand. Um, there's a lot in Brown Driver Briggs. Um, Strong's is to stand in various relations, literally and figuratively. And transitively and transitively abide, arise, cease, confirm. So I think we can get a pretty good idea of stand to be firm. And that would go back to if you go back to verse seven, the flint, like a rock, the face like a flint, like a rock. If you're going to stand, you're going to stand firm on the platform. You're going to stand firm and, and, and be immovable like the rock, immovable. So bring the one. So you would you say that this is. Oh, we'll wait until we get there. We'll go through each word first. So um, he asked the question, who of you are going to contend with me? Come and stand next to me, right? Um, 
let us stand together. And who is my adversary? Which you think here we're looking, who is my adversary? I'm gonna leave you guys for this. Who is my adversary? Let him come near. So let's break that down then. Who wants to go first? So we've established that um, the one who's near of us, we have a personal relationship with Christ. He's the one that makes us righteous. So here we are with Christ as one, standing firm. And now you're asking, who will contend with us? Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near. And I want to, um, adversary, can go, goes, goes, we saw adversary and contend being similar. But also I want to note that the word near here, before I sit back down for a minute, the word near is to draw near and approach. So it's a different word. It's a different um, Hebrew word. 71785066. It's a different word. Is to draw near, to approach, to draw, or to come near. Um, so, okay, so let's um, break these down a little bit. What do you guys see in this verse? Can you go over near H7178? Can you post that onto a dock and near H5066 together? Is that possible? Yeah, for somebody that's What's really it? fast. If Adriana Is that too be... much work? <laughs> no, uh, one seems it. like it's an int. Sorry. Sorry. No, go ahead. It's so hard. Sometimes I can't tell if I'm on you know if i'm in the moment right with you guys or not um the near in the first part seems like it is internal but i'm just guessing that's why i was wanting to see them compared and when you just read the near just now before you sat down it sounded like one that isn't more of an um, external near like one you would experience when someone walks close to you I'm going to try to get them. I am just not as quick on the draw with this as uh, some are. Plus, my computer's wanting to be slow. Uh, okay, just give me just one second. I'm almost there. Christine just posted in the chat, I think. Both of them? Let's see. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So they are different. They are distinct. Yes, they are different. different. Yes. yes. And one, the one she just posted is okay. Now I got to move the chat so I can see your board. Is the first one eight? Let's see. Seven one two six. Where's seven one two six? This is the second one. I don't have it all up there. Sorry. It's a, uh, I mean, it's there, but I don't have the number up there, but it's the um, second one to draw near and it is uh, H5066. So there are two different words. It's to draw near or the other one. Um, I think she, is that the one she had, I think in there. Yeah, she got it now. So the first, so the first one, let me pull up. Let's see. Is different it's way different because it's like a familial, um, you know, like a bloodline, even if, right. if you it, like, like, you know, your family members, uh, you share something uniquely closer. Um, you know, like the old saying blood is thicker than water. It's different. And this of course is even more spiritual of an application because this is the relationship um, we're allied with the king of heaven, right? Uh, we're uh, genetically hooked up with him. And the other one is more um, not not familial, um, right? It's outward. One is inward. That's how I'm seeing it right now. I could be wrong. But one is inward, kind of an inward experience, and one is an more of an outward demonstrated experience. I don't think they're she's... both going to be demonstrated. Your inward and this how you react to it when they come near. Yeah, and I see what she put in Strong's is not the Brown Driver Briggs, but just the Strong's um, for for seven one two six. And uh, here, or is it here? Yeah. Okay. Maybe I just missed part of it. Near in place. Okay. 
So near in place, I just didn't see the Brown Driver Briggs in there. Um, and actually you have, Christine, you have a different number, 7126. It's 7178. Um, the first one is 7178, which we'd have to go look at the one, whatever you're looking at, 7126. Um, I don't know where you got 7126 at, but 7138. The, seven one, the 7138, yeah, that's the one in, on my phone. Yeah. So yeah, mine too. 7138. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure where the 7126. Oh, you typed it. You typed it wrong instead of copied it. Is that what that is? Okay. Okay. Oh, there's a root word though. 7126. That's oh, yeah. Where, you see that one? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh that's strong's definition. Okay. Which takes you back to come near and approach as well. Yeah bring near for whatever purpose. Okay, that explains it, thank you. Mm -hmm. To make ready, stand, at the very bottom of that. Um, yeah, I see that one. Yeah, to make More ready. ready, shortly. So, um, and I don't know what screen you guys are seeing. What screen do you have up there? Definitions. Okay, okay. <laughs> Just track of which one I- You're down in the corner. Okay, I'm gonna go back over here. Okay, so let's go back to the verse. And we have, So he is near that justifies. So he to draw near is what your guys are looking at. And, and when you take it to the root, right? To come near, he comes near, he approaches. Um, but it's also of a personal relationship because he does draw near. Let's see, how does that go? Um, you say draw near to me and that somebody help me with the what I'm trying to think of when it comes to drawing near. Well, he's drawing near, and it's personal because why? Because he justifies me. So you have that relationship right there because he's the justifier, and you know, he's got to draw near to do that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. But as he draws near, we see more of his character, right? Yes. And, and that kind of makes me go back to this verse five, verse four and five here, where he opens my ear to, ear to hear as the learned. And, um, and as he does that, he's actually drawing us in closer proximity to him, learning more of his character. And it's in seeing his character that has... Um, an effect on people to receive and rejoice or rebel in turn. So the one that makes us righteous is near. And, and I, I, I think that you can take, I don't know if you, to me, I see the three verses here. We haven't gotten to nine yet, but I see the three verses kind of all linked, seven, eight, and nine all linked, saying the same as each, as a repeat and enlarge each one, saying just different ways of what it is that they're doing. But I see a repeat and enlarge here that he, who will contend with me, right? Let the one that contends with me come stand next to me. And then who's my 
got something in my screen again. Hang on one second. So who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. So it's a different near. Let him come near to me. This one is draw near to me. So my, bring my adversary. Let my adversary draw near to me. Let's stand side by side. And the same thing is who's going to contend with me or the one that contends is my adversary as well. And that was in the definition as well of contend. Let us stand together. So to me, these are this here is a repeat and enlarge. Just another way of saying. Um, here we are stating our faith, or Christ is that the one that justifies me is near. I have a relationship with my God now. So I'm ready to stand. Who's going to contend with me? Let us come stand together. Let us stand side to side so the people can juxtapose and, and uh, see the difference between good and bad, right and wrong. That stand together yeah. in verse eight. Uh -huh. I mean, you, you brought it up, you know, summarizing it to where I see the standing together is saying, and that is together. That is all one word. And it's H3162. Right. You have that. And it's union. BDB, lexicon, union, unitedness, together, all together, all together, alike. That's the adverb. At and one moment. At one moment, yes. And Strong's is 3161. Well, it is the same, same number. Properly a unit that is adverbally unitedly alike, at once, both likewise, only all together with all. So it encompasses more people, more. You add another point. You add another point that I think comes from that. And that can two stand together unless they be agreed. Yes. <laughs> There thank you, you go. Thank you for bringing that point out because I. That, yeah, because it has. Yeah, it's looking at it in a different way than just stand. It's talking uh, about being united. Um, yeah. Who contends with me? Can we? Can we be united? Can the two of us stand together unless we're agreed? Mm -hmm. Christine writes in the chat. Um, Taken to heart, this verse came in. Can increase. Let me see. I'm seeing this. Can yeah, I'm seeing this. Hope and faith. That's what it was. Yeah, so I'm, I'm seeing this verse in two ways. One, okay, so the first verse. Now, he is near that justifies me. So the person who is speaking, it, it knows who is making him righteous. Yes. Okay, so so that's separate. So then, so then the repeat in large says, who will contend with me? Let us stand to, uh, together. Who is my adversary? Let us come near to help me. So those two can be seen in two different ways. And one way is saying who will contend okay who will contend with me let us let us stand together so the, that one one way of looking at that is saying i know i'm righteous so you come near you come next stand next to me so people can see who's right and wrong and the in the second verse you know who's my adversary who's my enemy you know come near me so again we can juxtapose and to see who's right and wrong that's one way of looking at it the other way of looking at it is that, you know, because I am righteous, you come next to me and be righteous. You're my enemy, come near me so you can be righteous. That's another way of looking at it. Yeah. And, and I agree, but I think as we go forward, we're going to see there's a bigger juxtaposition going on. No, I mean, as, as, <clears throat> you know how, I, you know, 
as we progress along, we'll probably see you know, which one is correct. But you know how depending on how you write right. a sentence or write a phrase, it could be read two different ways. Right. That's what this verse reminds me. It could, it could be seen in two different ways. So it needs, uh, lost my train of thought, mid sentence, sorry. Penny wants to know, adversary. H1167, adversary. Uh, let me back up, make sure I got the right one. Who is my adversary? Um, there's two, H1167 and H491. And H1167 says owner, husband, lord, citizens, inhabitants, rulers, lords, strongs is master, hence a husband, figuratively an owner. Well, that's an interesting, that, that's H1667, H4941. Um, adversary is judgment, justice, ordinance. That's interesting. Oh, that'd take a whole lot to pick apart that. I don't know if you guys want to tackle the adversary. Um, would be a good one to tackle. There's a lot there going on. Is, is that what it means? Is that what it, when there's two Hebrew words that are depicting, is that what it means in this Esword? That there's two Hebrew words that you have to look and examine both. Is that what that? Yeah, okay. I think that's what Christine says too. I don't know. Um, yeah, I think it takes one English word and two Hebrew words. Okay. So, what Fell is saying, if I understand correctly, it could be read as if um, for who's going to contend with me, come on up and let you be you become righteous too and let draw near that you can be made righteous too is that a fair is that fair representation of what you said yeah so something like that because that's because i i know i'm right because i know who makes me right so like i said there's two ways of looking at it that, that, and that is the other way is let's let's stand together let's agree because because <clears throat> because i am righteous <laughs> And you are not I'm, now. I'm inviting you to come come next to me to be like me. So you're my enemy, you know. So come near to me because I'm the righteous one. And if you want to be righteous, then then you can be like me. So come near me, draw near to me. That's another way of looking at it. Rather than having this adversarial confrontational, it's it, it could be more invitational. Yeah, and if, but if you do take the previous verses, which we did already look at, we can see that you're comparing and contrasting the enemies, the adversaries, those who contend with them, and then the one with faith. Right. It's, it's, it's because of the previous verses and probably the verses after that, we can make a, a clear distinction. But if you read just this verse alone. Right. You can read it either way. You can read it both. Right. Ways. Nice point. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't know if Penny can talk. Penny asked questions on adversary. I don't know if anybody wants to bring up that go into adversary. Um, May I? Yes. Oh, I was thinking in a, an example in the Bible, in the book of Zechariah, when the high priest Joshua is uh, uh, yeah. I is being know. accused, uh, he has filthy rags, and he has no no way no, he can boast or make things right, but. Um, I can see a perfect example because Jesus and the devil, the adversary and his justifier um, are both at, um, in the scene. One 
rescuing him. And the other one accusing the accuser. That I believe is the one that that we are invited to come near us because everything he says about us is is true. But the Lord says uh, mercy and 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 he uh, he claims ownership over us and uh, I believe that is everyone's case. No one has anything to boast about. We have to be make right every one of us, especially me. Mm. Isn't that good to to remember. Always. Where is it? Uh, I think it's coming up in chapter 51, which we're not going to get there today, but um, it might touch on that. So he is near that justifies me. Who will contend with me? Is the me the same person? Are we all saying the me is the same person? Yes, I believe. Sounds like it. Who's mine adversary that's the same person? Me, me, mine. And then me. Yeah, the word yes, adversary. You got Go ahead. Yes, I, I do believe that me is that same person throughout. And if we're looking at it in the literal, the, the, the natural the, has to be talking about Isaiah, right? Isaiah or yeah, yeah this in this uh, particular uh, book, yes, I, Isaiah, but I, I think probably anybody who is you know, it could be with Christ or anyone who has, you know, has God on his side, who is, you know, who is made righteous. But in this particular, probably Isaiah. And Isaiah knew that all his righteousness is like filthy rags. So it's Christ our righteousness. He's the one that makes us righteous. In him, we are righteous. Right, because Christ is the one that justifies. And so in this, so even though, you know, our own righteousness is filthy as rags, it's Christ that is near that makes me righteous. Right. Without him, my righteousness is filthy rags. So Elaine, you use those three verses, eight, nine, and ten, because they all go together. Seven, eight, and nine. I mean seven, eight, and nine. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So well, I think that's what we seen in nine. We didn't look at nine. We haven't finished really. I was gonna ask eight. if everybody's ready for nine, because I think that's gonna answer Fell's question. Yeah. First of all, the um confirm. So are we done with verse eight for now? Adversary was a tough one. Um, there's some things that I, I don't understand. Maybe we should spend the time in adversary real quick. No, not real quick, but in adversary. Because that, and it has two words. And it says, as adversary, it says, owner, husband, lord. Rulers, lords. I'm just kind of skimming through some of them. Used of foreign gods, 
characteristics, let's say noun of relationship used to characterize master of dreams used of foreign gods, husband figuratively owner. Hmm. Really interesting word for um, or definition here for adversary. But I don't know that that owner, husband, or lord is not talking about what I think it's talking about. It's talking about if um, looking at more of the words that go with it, I think it's more talking about one that it's, I think it's like I'm thinking slavery, you know, in bondage to. Yes. A, a bondage is here. My adversary, the one I'm in bondage to. Yeah, because D says uh, rulers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then I, I don't understand the 4941 judgment, justice, ordinance. I, I don't get how you get adversary out of these definitions there. That one really confuses me. It's more of the definition of justice that we saw, and it may be the same word, same, same word that we saw in one of the other ones where we were looking at justice, or I think I was anyways. So my adversary, the one I'm in, based on that definition, it's looking like the one you're in bondage to. Um, who is my, who will contend with me and who is my adversary? So it would also apply from Strong's too, because it says the very first word is a master. Yeah, yeah. It's like it, someone it, over you who's it, ruling you. Right, and it's interesting because Christ can be our master as well, right? Yeah. In, in a positive sense. So I guess we have to look at it as in this is with the words and the definitions there. It's a negative sense, not a positive sense. Yeah, because then the next word is husband. Right. <laughs> or figuratively owner. Yeah. So if you have a husband that owns you, you've got a problem probably. Yeah, I would say so. He doesn't own you. He doesn't own you. Are we staying just inside the verse still, or can we go outside the verse? Uh, well, we're kind of building up with the ones that we've looked at. What do you got in mind? We're supposed to stay inside the verse. Well, I know that we're supposed to look at the words and then stay inside the verse but then once you've done that you can then look at other scripture that ties in that that, that fits with it and and um as as you're just having this discussion i'm looking at romans chapter 8 starting with around verse 30 and it says more oh moreover whom he did predestinate them then he also called and whom he called then he also justified, because the word justified is in here too, and whom he justified, then he also glorified in verse 31. It's it's talking about this adversarial thing. It says, what shall we, excuse me, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, Mommy. who can be against us? Right. I, I think that's a good verse to pull into this, if you were going to pull one into it, because it's kind of saying the same thing. Right, so let's um, yeah, so that, let's let's if you figure it out in, within the verse. If this if this is a repeated enlarge, which I, I think it is a repeated enlarge. Uh, the, the sense here in an adversary is we're talking about an enemy, uh, not a friend, but an enemy because it's a repeated enlarge. It's repeating who will contend with me, and that contend is who is. Who is against me? So if it's a repeated at large, who is who who will contend with me? Is uh, who is my adversary? Is repeating and enlarging who will contend with me? So I think that in this verse answers that question: what adversary is? Is somebody who contends? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. You can go ahead. So we could, that one we can draw out, right? Can you help me out here? Because I'm not so good at this. Repeat and large or? 
So you're saying in 10 equals adversary, right? I'm not quite like that. Is that right? Yeah, so we're yeah. getting large. You can see that, you know, just by the words you have up there, near, contend, stand, adversary, near. You got a chiasm going there. Because yeah. the contend and the adversary counsel each other, the near and the near. We're just taking the face word, you know, like Miller would just, he's not going into the Hebrew. He's just taking the face word near. And then in the, in the middle there, you have um, standing together. It's sort of like your access point, your focal point. But you can see with that contend and adversary really um, explains each other. So would you say you have near and near, right? Yeah. You have justify and stand, right? And you have contend and adversary. Is that right? What you're looking at? Or did I do that wrong? Yeah, I wasn't. No, that's that's good. But I was, um, hate to say it, but I was throwing out um, the justified. I was just going near, near, contend, adversary. And I was stuck with, you know, standing in the middle. But the standing, I think, yeah, I, that's what the justifier does. He stands for us. It makes us able but I, and, if he makes us righteous, then we're yeah. able to stand. Yeah. Stand fast in the liberty with which he set us free. You stand you stand upright against your contender. I agree. All good points everybody's made. You can see it's great controversy language. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a lot of things in there, a lot of tools to be using on this verse um, with a repeat and enlarge and, and now looking at that as a chiasm. A lot of tools. So are we ready to go to nine? Well, it's funny how nine and starts and how seven starts, both sides of Verse eight, for the Lord God will help me. And verse nine is, behold, the Lord God will help me. Yeah. I, I just yeah. looked at seven, that as a, seven uh, and, that in a, Yeah, seven and nine, for the Lord God will help me. And nine is, behold, the Lord God will help me. Um, it's interesting yeah. because if you took for the Lord God, there's a faith thing. Behold, doesn't that mean to watch, to look, to see? And yeah. It doesn't have, it yeah. doesn't have something in in in, uh, in my concordance that I'm looking at on my phone, anyways. Um, maybe somebody else has because I think on my phone it's my sword, not his sword. So I don't know if somebody has another one that might have behold. Because behold is to look and see, right? Yes, yeah, and the strong four is like behold. because. Sorry. Go ahead, Susan. Sorry, I interrupted, David. Go ahead. But for, for, the word for is like because. Yeah. Because the Lord God will help me. But then you move to behold. Now, now it's like watch. Right? Yes. I agree. So, so now we're going to watch. People are going to watch the visual and see it. Who is he that shall condemn me? And I think I have the verses or the condemn and, and then wax old is what I put up there condemn lo they shall all wax old as a garment so um and the moss will eat them up so I think that kind of settles to me anyways and if anybody has any other understanding to it help me out but when it settles the previous verse which way to read that verse because the adversary and the one that contends with me they're the same person and they're going to try to condemn me right and he's saying behold watch because the lord's going to help me right because they're all going to wax old like a garment in other words they're going to die and that wax old like a garment comes up again in 51 a few different times he's so he's he's comparing and contrasting the lost and the wicked but the the saved and the lost the wicked and the righteous throughout here throughout these chapters he's comparing and contrasting the the um the two sides and and to me what i get out of it just with this just with what we've gone through in chapter 50 is what i get out of it is that he's he's through this process um faith is building 
or at this point, faith is here, right? But um, through the journey that we've been on, it's building our faith, strengthening our faith to this point. Um, but he's comparing and contrasting. So what it makes me think of is, is uh, say with Moses and going up to the Red Sea, and are you ready to go up to the Red Sea? And I know that's a different place on the line. I'm just using it as an example of coming up to a perilous point. And, and uh, is your faith ready? Are you ready to stand? Are you ready to stand when you come to this perilous point? Because we're going to go to that point. And, and are we able to stand when we get there? And he's telling us, look, this is what's going to happen to them. And I don't mean that in a way of, oh, great, it's going to happen to them. Because you know, we can, some of us can see some of our family members being a part of that, which we're, I know myself, cringing over. Um, but he's saying, you know, they're, they, they become our enemies. They're God's enemy. If they're, if they're our enemies and we're Christ, then they're Christ's enemies. And, and he's saying, um, it, it goes back into as well, fear not. Fear not. Fear not the one that can kill the body, right? Because, because your adversaries can't kill body and soul. They can only kill the body. Fear not. I am with you. I will help you. I justify you. I make you righteous. I do all these things. Therefore, you can stand in me. And in case you get come up to a fearful spot, fear not. Because there's going to come a time where they're all going to be gone. That's probably the wrong way to say that. Maybe somebody else can help say it better. But I think it's meant to build faith, at least from this perspective. Well, and I think that's why there's a slight changing of the word from uh, two verses uh, four, for the Lord God would help me because, and now as you're, as you're saying, you know, the increase in faith, you no, know, just watch. Now, watch how the Lord is going to help me. Uh, so now he's, so in a way, this is uh, proof. So not just because God is with me that you can't really see, but now watch what God is going to do. You know, the, uh, wax old as a garment and the moth shall eat them up. This is what's going to happen to the to those who condemn me. This is what's going to happen to my adversaries. It, this is me, what this this is what happens to those who stand against me. Yeah, and let me ask a question then, something to get us all to think about. Um, because he says, watch, right? And and it's in the future, they shall all, they they all shall wax old as a garment. So you're saying, watch, what are people gonna see? It, 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 I mean, it, in different points of this journey, we know there's martyrdom to come, right? So we're going to witness faithful people die, right? And you're going to have the adversary saying, why do you trust in him? I, I don't know how to word that other than put it out there as a thought to, I mean, this is what people are going to witness at, at, some, at part of this journey. And until you get into the time of trouble where they cannot touch us. And, um, but we're going to witness this. I, 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 what goes through my mind, for instance, is John Huss, okay? He's burning at the stake and people are, there's going to be two sides in that crowd. Some are going to become faithful and trust God. And some are going to be mocking and spitting and laughing and jeering that you're burning up at the stake. How do we, how do we, how do we touch on that? So, yeah, so you asked, you asked a good question at yeah. what point, you yeah. know, because when you say watch, it is, it is a future event. Yeah. So maybe, you know, I, I, I'm, I, I don't know, but perhaps this is on a different part of the line, maybe in a contextually. Uh, so, so let's say, you know, 144,000. 
Now we can say, watch what God is going to do. Yes, there's going to be martyrs along the way, but contextually, if we put this in a 144,000, about the line of 144,000, then the wicked will surely see, you know, with the seven plagues, what, what's going to happen to the adversaries. They're going to wax all those garments. They're going to be eaten up in the, in the days of the, pl the plague, while the 144,000 will not be touched. So maybe this is contextual. You know, where, in the, where in the history? Yeah, as you said that, I was remembering some of the other thoughts I had this morning is, is that, um, you know, we know these verses talk about Christ as well, right? So behold, the Lord God, will, and what's, what's going through my mind as I read this, um, you know, I trust in the Lord and all that. Okay, Christ was alive, right? He's alive. Then he's saying, the Lord God will help me. And then what do they do? They put him on the cross and people are witnessing him being put on the cross and thinking, and what are they saying? They're screaming to come down from there. Let your God take you down from there. See how his faith was tested? I don't know if anybody has any thoughts on that. We've been blessed. Well, when you, Go ahead. When you were talking about watching or behold it's the manner in which they're going to die you know there's always a lot of ways to die and Huss was brought up okay well he wasn't in there cussing and spitting at him and you know giving him all kind of business back what was he doing singing hymns well singing hymns okay so contrast that with Christ on the cross and one of the most powerful things that happened was the thief next to him. Yeah. The thief next to him, the way I heard it was, he watched the whole trial of Jesus. They were around there seeing everything that was going on. And so it was the witness of Christ. And they were all saying, even the Romans knew that he was innocent because of his witness. It was just plain straight out in front of the whole world that, wow, this guy is something different. And that's what, you know, the martyrs are all about too, because they have the mind of Christ and their witness is not reviling. It's more of, I'm sorry for you guys kind of thing. Forgive them, but they don't know what they're doing kind of a thing. But they're just as, as a completely 180 degree character to those that are jeering and spitting and laughing and having a party watching somebody die and people watch that from the sidelines. That's what Christians are more watched than any other people on the planet. And the reason why is because they're the ones that are the true ones and everybody wants to know, are they really true? Well, most of the time, sadly to say, they have the wrong witness. <coughs> and, and so then everybody's all happy. Yeah, see, there's the Christians over there, right? And they're the ones over there cussing and swearing and you know, doing all kinds of weird stuff, but it's the true witness that is going out there and being the example that God really wants us to be because he was that witness. Thank you. Really beautiful points to bring in then too, to, to open that up. That, um, this is on the cross and John has singing hymns and, and uh, it will be a witness um, of faith. Yeah. And, uh, and definitely there's going to be those that are still going to be doing the spitting and the, and the um, mocking and, and all of that. Because there surely was a yeah. cross, right? Right. The real rub is today. You know, all of our tests today are, are preparing us for that, those days ahead. And, you know, our neighbors will watch us. The people at the grocery store watch us, whether they know we're Christians or not. If you can see somebody and you say, you know, that guy may not be a Christian, but he sure acts like one. And so it's our daily walk. And uh, wherever we go in our homes or, or at the grocery store, that's, and the angels see all that. And the devil's angels see all that too. And they point fingers or they're shunned one way or the other is how we act on a, basically a moment by moment um, walk. Amen. So I kind of like. Yeah, maybe this. 
Maybe I it like, says the separation of the two classes. Yeah, I like the idea of goal setting um, and how taking some of what you said to put this into this thought um, of goal setting. If you know where it is, where it is you want to go, then you can map out, you know, what you need to do. And for me, I've always had it on my heart to be in, in that people, in that group of people of Zachariah 8, where the people of the nations come to, to us and say, we want to go with you because we know that God is with you. Well, it's not because just poof, all of a sudden, they, they, something comes upon them and says, God is with you. It's because of our everyday walk, because we exercised faith in what we did, because we exercised kindness, gentleness, meekness, mercy, goodness, um, patience, long suffering, right? And, and right. Uh, even when even when we were accused, we didn't rile back at someone, and and that may, it leaves a lasting impression on people's minds that wow, she didn't get mad, or he didn't get mad, and uh, what patience that person has, right? So all these these everyday little instances are opportunities to to be for or against Christ and to be um, to become those people in Zechariah 8 or the people in Joel or I believe these people here that we're headed in to look at his right arm that uh, that people see that God is that God is with us and that salvation is in the remnant the remnant whom he's called Any other thoughts? You, you, going from verse 7 to verse 9, for, mean because, or behold, watch. Um, this kind of popped into my head with faith is, maybe somebody can recite it better than I can. Seeing that which, believing that which you don't see, right? And your reward for that faith is seeing that which you believe. So you have to first believe in what you cannot see. Is that right? Yeah, that's faith. It's the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. Yes, there's a translation here of behold. I think this is Greek. I just Googled this of the word behold. And it says, look, gaze, see, regard, consider. I mean, see and regard. First you see it, then you regard it or think about it. You're considering what you're seeing. If you know that you're not distracted from that, but you you keep to it, and I'm speaking of by faith, because God just doesn't leave us hanging there. He's with us every moment. So when a difficult situations arise, or whatever it might be that God allows to happen. I see this over and over again. I know we all experience this where, you know, you don't know what the solution will be, but you're just gonna stand firm no matter what, because it's in his hands and he has the plan. And so, but you have to, for me, it's, yeah, I have to think about it. I can't be reactionary because that is, as Parmender gave us the study on fast brain, slow brain, it has to be by the slow brain because some of the things that I'm tested on is how I respond to things that other people say. And I'm ready to react. I mean, human nature is ready to react. 
on it and say the wrong thing at the wrong time. So this is where I feel God is really working with me right now to really, because all the different trials that I'm going through is all about how I'm reacting to them. The smoke in the air, uh, all the things out there that everyone around me is complaining about. And so I, I know that they're, these things are happening. They will happen. They've been prophesized to happen. <laughs> so that response that I have will generate faith in them or it will put me on the side of doubt with them. And, and that is a big, when we think of that responsibility with just words that we might speak or our faces, you know, that show complaint. <laughs> and I, I just, I, I read this now and it just comes out even more so with this word behold. Yeah. Thank you for what God is doing in and through us to prepare us. Our so faith when, when the big tests come, we're gonna be prepared because we've already been able to handle the smaller things that God has allowed to come and we've trusted him. I mean, my faith has to go a lot more than where it's at for sure. But yeah, this is, this is a beautiful way to understand and know how God is working and trust his word. Yeah, that's really, that's really good, Jackie, because it's reactionary. You know, we can go positive or we can go negative. And I think about the children of Israel in their 40 years in the wilderness. One of the things that's convicting to me is one of their biggest problems was they were complainers and murmurers. You know, God was leading them no less than he's leading us right now. And Absolutely. if we complain about the heat of the summer or we complain about the smoke, I lived up in the Sierras and you know, I remember complaining that I lived there all year long and I was waiting for the summer to come. And then what happens when the summer comes? Smoke everywhere. You can't even hardly see the mountains. I moved out of Los Angeles because of that when I was, a, you know, got out of college. I wanted to see fresh air. So was I complaining and murmuring? Yeah, probably I shouldn't have been because that's not our place. We should always find something positive in whatever state we're in and not be like those people that died in the desert because murmuring and complaining is not going to heaven. That doesn't Absolutely. make it happen. So thank you for that, Jackie. Yes, I, I saw it, you know, this week, especially because the smoke is so bad here. And I was, I didn't comment on it other than the fact that, say, yeah, it's pretty bad out there. And I want to consider my health as well, you know, with toxic air. But to not just go on in a rant with how bad everything is. <laughs> because there's a lot of things, you know, that are happening. And so what the Lord put in my mind and thank you for that, um, David. Uh, he put this thought in my mind to remind those that are closer to me that we're in a certain time now that we've never been in before. And it's the time of Jacob's trouble. And both my sons just picked that up right away. I mean, they're, they're complaining about the vaccines and the mask and all this and that, but they're looking at the time we're in and their, their minds are going back to when they were Adventists and they know what Sister White wrote about the time of trouble, Jacob's trouble. And so it was just, that's all I said, oh, it's a time of trouble. And one of my sons said, yeah, I've been reading about it now. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, at one phase of this, you know, you can say, oh, they're just going off the deep end or wherever. But, but then as these plagues or whatever we want to call them, what's happening 
are going to increase more and more. It's going to get these ones out there, their attention even more and more to, to really see that, you know, this is reality. This is not going back the way it was before. So, you know, and that calls for contemplation. As they contemplate what they see and what they hear their mother say, or, you know, people that are close to me, and that's all I can say at this point, then God will use it. So simple. And I just praised him because it didn't come across like, oh no, there she goes again. But, you know, wow, the things that are happening are not like we've ever seen before. They're saying that themselves. This is things are getting worse and worse. So, you know, all God calls upon me, us to do is just do your part and listen to my spirit speaking. So, you know, that you, do, you say and do the right thing to the beat, God be the glory and for the salvation of souls, whoever they might be. So I just praise him for how he's working and teaching us and changing us. I think in verse nine, he's telling us what shall come upon them, but he gives us evidence throughout, throughout scripture what's going to come upon you is because the the, the the dividing of the um saved and the lost the good and the, the righteous and the wicked is 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 being made more and more plain and something jackie said made me think of the because we, we brought this up in a discussion i think in this study for another purpose or maybe we were just talking about it with the you know when i read that article on in, in the New York Times when we were at lunch, but um, how they're actually saying, I think Francisco brought it up too, that they're actually saying that climate change is at a point where there's, you're at a point where it cannot go back to the way it was. So a cause and effect, if, you, if, you, if you're if you on the side of conspiracy theories and we don't even believe in climate change to begin with, but if you're not on the side of conspiracy theories and you're seeing reports scientific reports that are saying that are laying out this is it it's not going to get any better it's only going to be more and more destructive giving the visual that the end is upon us absolutely is this um um i think it's in 51 where it says that the earth is going to wax old like a garment and then the person is the people are going to wax like the people something along those lines so, um, because that's what we're doing, we're, we're destroying the planet. I know I'm guilty of, of that for my years of careless wastefulness and not thinking anything of it. I mean, this is just the way it is in life. You got all this plastic and this and that and water and just wherever, and you don't, you don't ever give any thought to it. And uh, so here we are now the, with the, with the fossil fuels as well. And, and burning up the, the, the ozone. It's like all these things are all culminating at one time and people are becoming, to, unless you're believing in conspiracy theories, people are becoming to see, hey, this is not headed in a good direction. And, and it's interesting when you go back to that first verse that we learned where we saw cause and effect in there, you can even take climate change and, it's it's not that it's not that God rain. I mean, I know the, the word says it that way that God rains down fire. We brought it on ourselves. We brought it on ourselves. And um, somebody said something that made me think of Yellowstone. Somebody brought up volcanoes in uh, 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 earlier. I might have been Jackie. I can't remember somebody wrote up volcanoes, but um, but all these things, these elements are there just ready to start exploding. And uh, to the point of no return, there are only one way, call the people out of Babylon before that destruction comes. And then you've got on top of the, the, the things of nature being all out of sorts, 
you have humanity on its last legs as well. Um, seeing the hatred that is out there. As I understand um, in Patriarchs and Prophets, um, when, when uh, it describes the flood and what God did after the flood, and describes how all the all the uh, dying and dead vegetation and and the animal life and human life that was all you know buried so that it wouldn't be on the surface of the ground. We know there. If, if people want to find the exact spot, look up the word arsenal. It's the only place in the Spirit of Prophecy where that word is used, and it refers to all the this underground molten masses and 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 the and the and the water that God has underground and everything and it refers to it as God's arsenal. Yeah. Because I mean the earth originally didn't have didn't have um you know volcanic activity underneath the ground and earthquakes and 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 volcanoes spewing all this stuff into the air. This is all a result of sin. It's part of the earth waxing old as a garment. It's because of what God had to do because of sin. And in the end, we know we're told that the earth is going to be convulsing. You know, there, there's going to be things that are going to be a lot is going to be happening. And, and God, you know, it, because it's what's going to happen, it, it, that's where it's headed. Um, but I, I also see verse on a different note. I see verse seven, eight, and nine together being a complete testimony of faith the whole thing is a testimony of faith because you know he's saying who is going to contend with me you know and who is going to condemn me and i you know you look at other scriptures you know like romans 8 1 it says you know there is no condemnation those are in christ jesus and you see you see um that in Psalm 73, as an example, you know, David, at one point, he was complaining about the people who were having, a, a, you know, a good life, living an earthly life, going along and, and mocking God. And, and he was complaining to God about it. And then it says that, that until he went into God's sanctuary and he understood their end. So those that are, that are not aligning themselves with God you know, they're, they're, they're damned already because God came into the world, you know, so people wouldn't be damned, you know, or they could come out of that damnation. And, and, and so I see that, I see that um, this is a whole t verses seven, eight, and nine for sure and is just a testimony of faith and recognizing when it says, who shall condemn me, even, even the woman caught in adultery once God stood on, stood on her side, he had to say, where are your accusers? Because they, their, 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 their mouths are stopped. Yeah. Nobody can say anything. And so it, to me, it's a testimony of faith that you can, you can say the Lord's on my side. If he's the one who's justified me, nobody can condemn me. You know, they, they can't. And, 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 and it testifies to what's going to happen to those who try to put themselves in that place because they're, they're, they're losing out. You know, they're, they're going to wax old and, and, and they're going to be destroyed. I mean, that's when, I mean, David in Psalm 73 was actually apologizing to God that he was being like a, a, a brute beast or an animal, you know, saying, you know, all these, these wicked people and they're, they're having such a good life. And then once he understood that they were going to lose out on eternal life and they're going to be destroyed, then that, that shut him up and he just realized, wow, I just need, that's why Jesus says, love your enemies because who is your enemy? The only one who's the, the one who condemns uh, the, the, the accuser of the brethren is Satan. And if we love our enemies, all it's going to do is try to help other human beings who are part of our human family to recognize that we need, we, we need to, to recognize the love of God and had that love of God be seen through us to other people so that they can end up on the right side, you know, because I don't know what else to say. It's, it all just fits together really beautifully. I, I, I 
I agree because that's what I saw in seven, eight, nine. And I want to ask a question. Um, does anybody else, how does everybody else feel about that summary, basically, of it summarizing um, a faithful um, experience here? Is there anybody that does not see that? Adding to what the brother just said, I say a man to that and also that if we keep in mind that our war is not against flesh and blood, and <clears throat> I think we're gonna be more merciful about those who contend with us. Amen. Anybody else? As we, as we go forward in, um, into 51, I, I believe we'll see it even more, but we'll see where it leads, where that faith, that faith leads to. Um, and I don't know when we'll pick this back up again, maybe next week, I can't remember if it's, but then definitely the week after that, not, because we'll be with the camp meeting. But just read, I'll read 10 and 11 real quick, um, but we'll have to look at them later. Who is among you that feareth the Lord? And obeyeth the voice of his servant that walketh in darkness and hath no light. So is there any of you that are, if you fear the Lord and you obey his, the voice of his servant, are you walking in darkness? Do you not have light? No, we do have light. We're not walking in darkness. Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. And stay in trust with the, um, can be, are interchangeable at times. Stay in trust, trust in, trust in God. And behold, all ye that kindle a fire that compass, because we've seen that there's the righteous and the wicked being contrasted here. Um, ye that kindle a fire that compass yourselves about with sparks, walk in the light of your fire and the sparks that ye have kindled. This shall you have of my hand. Ye shall lie down in sorrow. He's telling us the end of those that, um, that want to walk in their own fire. And, and, and it... You know, the chapter began with, um, where's the bill of divorcement that I wrote? I didn't write it. You wrote it yourself. You guys divorced yourself from me, right? And then he raises up and and, get, and opens up the ear to hear, to, to hear, the, of, to be hearers of the, how to say it, um, of the learned. Um, morning by morning, he wakens my ear to hear as the learned. So we know that he woke everybody up, 19, or not everybody, but you know, in the church, the church was to be woken up, to hear, everybody was called, everybody had an opportunity, but they didn't all hear, and they didn't all, those that heard, not all of them liked what they heard, uh, but in this case, this one, um, in this case, this, this one here was not rebellious, neither turned away, um, as in, we know that as you draw near to God, you see more of his character, and we're, you know, just a big witness when it comes to the LGBT community um, and what we're seeing in, in, in the gender issue. Hey, guys, hi, hi. When we see the gender issue, that um, you got some big place to see people walk away, whereas we might not have noticed some of the walking away and some of the shakings that have come along. But it's a clear um, place to see people walk away. So, so he wakens my ear and he draws me closer and closer so that I can get to know his character more and more and I continue to press on and you know your faith builds and builds and builds but he's then comparing and contrasting the, um, the righteous and the wicked and, and, uh, and to help us along and, and in helping us all along the way, he's the one that justifies us. Um, he's the one that will help us. And he tells us what's going to happen to those that follow him and what's going to happen to those that contend with him. Or when they contend with us prayerfully, we are one with him, so they're contending with him. And, uh, and compares and contrasts them and tells us that they're going to wax old like a garment and the moth's going to eat them up and they're going to um, lie down in sorrow. And giving us every opportunity to um, choose the right, to, to know, like laying before us, and, and what's going to be laid before the people plainly is life or death. Choose this day, right? I, I remember that being one of the things that I picked up really quick in the Bible as well. Is that, I mean, I had this idea of, of things I, I, I knew or heard about 
life and death and all the other years of working with these Mary Kay women that would quote scripture before I ever even read a Bible, but they'd always quote, um, you know, verses about how he's going to make me prosper and all this other stuff, give me life and give it more abundantly. And they associate abundant, not all of them, but they associate bun, abundantly. And a lot of people in the world do this abundantly with money and property and, and, you know, fancy cars and all that kind of stuff. That's what he's going to give me. And, uh, and that's not, that's not what he's, what it's there for. So, but in the end, whatever they had in this life, um, if they were his adversary, they had the opportunity here, and they chose to be his adversary. And even if they didn't choose openly, oh, I lost my train of thought. So you got the life or death situation that's going to be placed before everybody and um, plainly see life or death. So what we're seeing, I believe, as well as faith is that, is, which we've already known for a long time, but I think we're seeing that in this in these few verses here as well, that um, we're going to see what happens to, you know, you've got the righteous or the wicked. Which one do you want? One path is going to wax old like a garment. It's going to be eaten up like a moth. It's going to lie down in sorrow. And the other one, right? The other one is going to be with the Lord forevermore. Elaine? Which one do you want? Elaine? Yeah? If you look at, um, you know, everybody... So many people you talk about common verses that people know, and we understand already what you're saying about this prosperity gospel being a false gospel. Yeah. The way they preach it. But I mean, you know, there's so many people who aren't even church going people at all who know John 316. Yeah. You know, and but a lot of people don't read John 3, 17, 18, and 19, and it fits perfectly into what we're studying right here now in Isaiah, because you know, um, Verse 17 says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. So we're talking about who is he that condemns? It's not God, okay? For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And then it, then it clarifies this. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. So it, it, it just, it, it's a choice. It's a choice, yeah. A choice. Yeah. And, and it takes me back to the understanding, coming to understand cause and effect a long time ago that if you don't like where you're at in life, you can change the course by looking, because where you're at in life is how you live your life got you there. And if you don't like where you're at in life, you can change your course and change your direction. Again, going back to goal setting, cause and effect, if you don't, it, you know, you can, he's going to head us off, showing us where we're headed so that we can see our wrong, so that we can turn to the right. I don't mean the right as in the Republican right, turn to the righteous, to, to the righteous path. We have the opportunity. He's going to give everybody that opportunity to choose life or death. Hey. Sorry. Sorry, guys. So, um, but does anybody have any other comments before we thank you, Bob, for thank you all of you guys for your interaction with this, um, Fell and everybody else with all your interaction with this. I, I, I was, um, I'm thankful that we had the opportunity to go through this and I pray for more opportunities with it. Um, does anybody have any other comments? We got silence, I guess. So we'll close it off here. Susan, would you like to close in prayer? Okay. Thank you. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for such a blessed day. From the very beginning when Francesco let out, Lord, and we read the desire of the ages and 
we join together and unite together in our thoughts, Lord, as we contemplate these beautiful truths that you are opening up to us. Thank you for the prayer time that we had, Lord, where those in pain or suffering under various um, maladies are able to feel comfortable enough, Lord, to express their their feelings amongst us so that we can come together and understand each other and, and where each other is at more, Lord, and so that we can better pray for one another, Lord. Thank you for that. Thank you for Donna's beautiful study, Lord. It was so well laid out and simple to understand. For me, that's so helpful, Lord. It, it helps me to see it and order it in my mind so much better when it's first simple and then gets more difficult gradually. Thank you, Lord, for that blessed study. And and then now, this was wonderful. And it's so nice when different people give input, Lord, because it just expands our views and and helps us all see. And we're all honing in together into one place together, knit together in love by you, Lord. This is the work you've done, and we know that. We know that none of us would be here, Lord, without you, and we know that we wouldn't understand these things without your Holy Spirit enlightening our minds. Thank you, Lord, for your patience, for your mercy with us, Lord, for teaching us how magnificent your grace is, for the beautiful hymns you've given us, Lord, that that can lighten our steps and and give us such joy and continue to bless each and every person here, Lord, and all of the members all around the world, Lord, and, and our leaders. Thank you so much, Lord, for such patient, um, such knowledgeable leaders, Lord, that are able to explain these difficult, some of these concepts are so difficult, I'll help those of us who are um, who struggle to remember all these things, and thank you for all the praises that came out, Lord, today in honor of you. Thank you for Christine's mom making it through the surgery, Lord, and and for Kathy making it through her surgery this week, Lord, and just bless each family here, each person here, Lord, and um, yes. May we continue to meditate on what we've learned today as we go to our respective places and quietly think about these things as we close the Sabbath. Thank you, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.